Hey, Jonathan here. So last night I went to a meetup put on by H2O and Nime, which are two companies which make some pretty cool open source tools for data science and machine learning. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. So H2O is an automated machine learning platform and I've produced some videos on them before. So I'll leave a link around here somewhere if you want to go check that out. Uh, but the new tool that I haven't really taken a look at before is Nime. So I just saw this last night and I've just downloaded and installed it. And this is what you can see up on the screen here. And the cool thing about this is this basically summarizes a data science, a typical data science workflow. And they have a whole bunch of different uh, examples and different workflows in here that you can have a little bit of a look at. So this is a uh, simple uh, classifier here. We've got a churn prediction model and all kinds of different things like that. Now, typically you would have to do this in code using something like R or Python. And I guess having to do some code um, creates a certain barrier to entry for people to get into. Uh, so it's a little bit less accessible. This is basically drag and drop. So you drag on all these little nodes onto the screen and you can build out data science workflows. Now for learning data science, I think this could actually be a pretty cool tool um, because uh, it uh, takes away the syntax part of things um, to kind of get going. And also being able to just explain things as well, like having this overview of an entire workflow right here, uh, I can take you through this right now and talk you through some of this process. So um, from going from left to right here, we've got uh, this node and we can actually take a look and, and actually run all these. So I'm just going to click this little play button here and this is going to go off and actually run all of these different steps. So you know, obviously the first part is reading in the data. Uh, then typically you would want to maybe do some cleaning on the data, some different things like that. Um, this particular model is a, uh, a classifier and it's going to try and predict based on, let's actually see if we can see some of the data here. So, okay, so here we have our table here. And this is the column that we are predicting here. So it's really only got two values, right? So it's got over 50,000 or under 50,000. And so this would be known as a binary classification problem because you're classifying everything into just to one of two different options here, right? So the next part, we've got some visual analysis of this. So this part here is, um, uh, it's kind of like conditional formatting for Excel really. So here, if I click on this and uh, if I go to the configuration, you can see that I've got colors um, for um, over 50,000 and under 50,000. And these are gonna show up in some of the other visualizations as we go through this as well. We have got some statistics. So let me open that up and take a look at that. Cool, so here we can see uh, this is the numeric columns right now. So you can see a uh, histogram for each of these. So it's good to be able to see the distribution of your data. And uh, so then you can see things like the skew, the min, the median, max, standard deviation, all those kind of useful bits of information. Here we have got all of our categorical values. So here. So we can see the distribution of the different types of categories. We can see missing values here. So we can see that uh, worker class is predominantly one uh, grouping here, the same with um, race. So, you know, the population is predominantly white in this uh, population. Uh, we've got more males than females here. So, you know, a whole bunch of quite useful information, top and bottom. Uh, so we can see what have we got here. Uh, basically, yeah, the, the top values for each of these different fields. So yeah, pretty, pretty handy kind of stuff here. All right. So in this section here, we've got data partitioning 
And in this section, basically what we're doing is we're taking out data and we're splitting it into two parts, which is, again, another key uh, process in a data science workflow. We're going to take part of this data to train our model, which basically means we're going to look at that set of data, look for the patterns in it, and then once that um, those patterns are detected, we are going to apply those uh, patterns to the rest of the data set to see if the patterns that were detected from the first data set are still relevant to the second data set. And so this is important so that we effectively don't overfit our data. So I don't know, this is maybe a slightly cheesy example, but let's say you had a suit tailored to you to perfectly, perfectly fit uh, your body, then if you had somebody else come along, um, then that might not be able to fit them at all, right? And so what happens is if we overfit our models, then they don't generalize to be able to apply to new data when new data comes in. And so this is a very important part here, uh, partitioning our data to make sure that we avoid those kind of issues, right? So the next part of this is we are choosing a model to actually apply to this data set. And so this, the first part here is training it and we're using a decision tree model here, right? Um, and then we apply the model. Okay, so this is the, um, uh, the using the, the rest of the data to see how well that model actually performed on the data that it didn't get to look at the first time. Um, and then over here, we have a score for that. So this is known as a Confucian matrix. So we can see how many things it scored accurately and how many things that it scored inaccurately, right? And then we have an accuracy score over here. But there's other scores and stuff as well. One that's very common is something known as AUC. Um, maybe we'll talk about that another time, but anyway. Uh, different ways that you can see how well your model's actually performing. Right. Okay, so what do we have over here? Okay, so here we have our table. There you go. So earlier on, we were looking at that uh, color coding. So we've got the color coding over here for this. And let's take a look at this visualization. We have a scatter plot here as well. Cool, and this scatter plot was, um, uh, again, th these colors are from the colors that we applied earlier. So anyway, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, a nice, really quick way of getting an overview of the entire process, seeing like all the different components involved. Now, as I mentioned, I just picked this up and just started playing with it. So I'm not really that familiar with the tool just yet, but you know, I can see that, you know, we have a whole bunch of things. These are, um, these are actually recommended nodes. So different things that you could apply to your data here, uh, things for dealing with missing values. Uh, what have we got table outputs and, um, yeah, writing out the CSV if you want to get your results back out, box plots, all different types of things. So, you know, something that you could definitely have a bit of a play with. So um, if you want to check out this product, it is a free open source product. Uh, they make money by basically selling servers uh, for uh, to corporations that's there with commercial support and all that sort of thing, just like um, I guess a lot of other other organizations do. Now, there are other tools out there like this as well. So for instance, um, Microsoft has got a tool, Microsoft ML Studio, which does something similar to this, um, but that, you know, you do need to pay for that. Um, there's other tools as well, like Alteryx is a, is a very popular tool, which also does something quite similar to this. But again, these aren't open source, they are paid products. So this one here, as far as I'm aware, um, is you know, fully free and open source for being able to do all of these different workflows and types of analysis. Um, and really only paid once you're kind of moving up to uh, a server um, version where you have lots of different people coming on, working on your team, working on this kind of thing. 
Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you want to learn more about getting into data analytics or data science, you can check out my website at www.datastrategywithjonathan.com. There's some free training that you can get access to over there. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.